to start out, on the line with us is the uh, editorial director of Reactionary Times, contributor to Newsmax, American Thinker, American Thinker, at Newsmax, American Thinker, and Townhall.com, ReactionaryTimes.com. Uh, Julio Rivera. Oh yeah, it's Julio is the Twitter handle. And uh, so, Julio, what's the the latest strategy that you right wingers are going to try to use to blame Trump's surrender around Afghanistan on uh, Joe Biden? Wow. Um, so that's how you guys are trying to spin it, I guess. Um, well, you know, that's, that's, the, the fact of the matter is, listen, we all wanted to pull out of Afghanistan um, in a major way um, and, and bring the majority of the, the troops that were there home. I think that was a, a bipartisan sentiment. Um, the problem is with the, the, the way that they went about doing it. I mean, if you know that you have these thousands of civilian um, support staff, you know, uh, translators, Americans, uh, Afghanis that were, um, you know, supporting the Afghanistan government, um, leaving them in, in the situation that they kind of have. I mean, I know that they're trying as best as they can to get as many people home, but this sloppy tactic um, that they went about, the, the way that they're doing it, I think, uh, you know, definitely putting the cart before the horse and putting a lot of people in the line of fire. I mean, there's reports on the ground now that the Taliban is going door to door looking for Americans, looking for the censors. Um, there have been reports of people being executed as a result of their failure to uh, pledge their allegiance to the Taliban. Um, you know, and, and then we can get into all the uh, the weapons, uh, the equipment cash. Uh, some people are estimating as much as about 70 to $90 billion worth of equipment is being left behind, which is uh, immediately going to be put into use by the Taliban. There was a report from the UN, uh, unclassified report from recently that said that Al-Qaeda actually is active in about 10 to 15 provinces within Afghanistan. So you know that uh, terror globally is going to proliferate now uh, mm -hmm. with the cover and the protection uh, and the harboring of the Taliban. Yeah, so, so I get all that, and I'm horrified by all that, Julio. I, I share your horror. Um, what I don't understand is, uh, you know, H.R. McMaster was uh, Donald Trump's national security advisor. And uh, he said last week, he said, our Secretary of State signed a surrender agreement with the Taliban. This collapse goes back to the capitulation agreement of February 2020. The Taliban didn't defeat us, we defeated ourselves. Donald Trump's then Defense Secretary, Mark Esper, said uh, Donald, uh, President Trump undermined the agreement. I objected to it. Um, a memo based on our recommendations to the military ch chain of command said that we not reduce our forces below 4,500 unless and until conditions were met by the Taliban. Um, otherwise, we would see what is unfolding right now in many ways. But Donald Trump was in such a hurry to get out of Afghanistan uh, originally and then, you know, to dump it on his successor later, that he didn't ask the Taliban for anything. He drew our troops down to 2,500. He signed what his own national security uh, advisor uh, uh, describes as a surrender agreement. He closed 10 Air Force bases and turned over all that material to the Taliban. Um, I, I, I share your outrage. It's, it's yeah. terrible uh, how, how badly you. Donald Trump screwed this pooch. Um, you know, and, yeah. and props to Joe Biden. You know, since July 1st, he's gotten 103,000 people out of Afghanistan when Donald Trump, just like with the vaccines, you know, yeah, here's some money to develop vaccines. Oh, a plan to distribute them? No, we never even thought about that. Literally left no plan whatsoever to get out of Afghanistan and prevented the Biden administration from even having access to military briefings from the time that Trump lost the election in, in November all the way up until January 20th. I mean, I, I, I get your outrage. I don't understand why you're not no, no. directing it toward Donald Trump. First off, this, this isn't our cooch to screw, so to speak. I mean, the fact of the matter is a lot of this goes back to the Afghani government. Right now, people don't understand the dynamics of this. And I think that's that was our problem. government. Listen, that was the I government, by the way, that Donald Trump cut United out of the negotiations. Our allies who still also maintains about a uh, true presence of about 7,000 troops. Um, you know, the Taliban has about 75,000 fighters, right? The Afghan government has about 300,000 troops, but it's not a conventional army. I mean, these armies are run by local warlords that are basically receiving uh, 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 money from the Afghan government to pay these soldiers. A lot of times, these warlords don't even pay their troops. A lot of these troops have probably been on both sides of the conflict 
It's a mess. But we could have maintained the same stalemate that we've had basically in place since 2014 by continuing to provide air support and intelligence support to the Afghani Julio, government. Julio, how do but we do that when that in February happen, of last year? No, no seri- a serious, qu- a serious question not, here. Not President Trump. No, I, I you know, I, I, I get it. And I, and I think you can actually build a case for our having maintained a small presence in Afghanistan. But how do you yeah, do that when world. in February of last year, when Donald Trump was president, he ordered, actually it was, a, it was the year before that, he ordered the release of the guy who is, you know, who was the co-founder of the Taliban, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, Baradar, this uh, Mullah Baradar. He ordered his release from prison. He was being held in uh, Pakistan in prison. He ordered the release of 5,000 of the Taliban's top fighters. And then in February of last year, when he sat down in Doha to negotiate our, you know, the Trump surrender deal, he cut out the Afghan government. He said to the Ghani government, the elected government of, of Afghanistan, you may not participate in these conversations. To hell with you guys. I'm going to cut a surrender deal with the Taliban. I'm going to give them everything they want. And, and uh, you know, and I'm going to keep my campaign promise of getting us out that's, of that's Afghanistan. Some nice, uh, that's some nice revisionist history there. But, I mean, right now, it's true. the irresponsibility of the Biden administration trying to claim, finally claim a victory, you know, in advance of 9-11. You know, they screwed the economy. They screwed up the border. They want to give the appearance. Joe Biden wants to have his mission accomplished moment. And right now, unfortunately, there's going to be hundreds, possibly thousands of people who are going to Trump die. Trump cut out the Afghan place. government. But listen, you're talking about stuff. We're well past that point. Joe Biden. But, but you're saying, why didn't president. we collaborate with the Joe Afghan Biden government? I'm telling this. you why. Joe Biden owns it. You're trying to make this about Trump. You're doing the same thing Obama did for years with the blame Bush, the blame Bush. And this is well, the Bush hadn't exactly lied us into this way. war. We wouldn't be having this Syrian conversation. The Iraq pullout did because the same thing that Obama did, leaving them weapons, mm-hmm. artillery. That led to the rise of ISIS. We're going to have a resurgence of Al Qaeda because of the way that Joe Biden handled this. And you know who benefits, um, uh, Tom? And we could probably both agree on this: the military-industrial complex stands to make a lot more money in this perpetual war because it will not end here because eventually around the world there's going to be these terrorist attacks that are going to lead to another afghani war uh, julio i would i would submit to you i uh, jeff tiedrich tweeted this yesterday and i'll just i'll just quote it because i think it's so eloquent he said if you sat silently when trump abandoned syria and evacuated exactly zero oh. of our turkish of our kurdish allies and handed over our military bases to russia Kindly sit the F down and shut the F up and spare us your fake <laughs> outrage over Afghanistan. Biden has rescued over 100,000 well, Listen, people. the Afghanistan issue, regardless of the state of Afghanistan, the one thing, and I was in the military myself, leave no man behind. And Joe Biden left thousands of civilian cooperators, Americans. You mean Donald Trump did? I'm telling this is, this is the biggest Donald issue Trump I cut this, year, this deal a year and a half ago, Julio. Regardless of what the outcome was. I'm not an interventionist. I'm not into nation building. All these experiments go back. The biggest issue I have with Joe Biden that he should be ashamed of is the fact that he left behind American civilian cooperators and these. He's got now 103,000 people. How many people did Donald Trump get out after he signed that surrender agreement in February 2020? How many? The, 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 the actual, Zero. The, the, the Zero. Program was he didn't do active. squad. He played golf. Was still active, Tom. It was still active. All of this that's occurring now, all these problems that are happening right now, we got Taiwan uh, under pressure from China because China's putting up China state media saying that America's not going to come to your rescue anymore. All these hot zones right now get hotter than ever because the perception globally is that America will leave behind their allies. A lot of this is just optics, Tom. It's horrible optics. Okay. I'll leave you with the last word, uh, Julio. Julio Rivera, uh, editorial director at ReactionaryTimes.com. On Twitter, oh yeah, Y E A H, oh yeah, it's Julio. Hey, Julio, thank you for dropping by. It's good talking with you. Thank you as always, Tom. Okay.